Hello, cute hearts. It's time to start our study of the cardiovascular system. We are going to spend the next three lectures talking about the cardiovascular system. Today we're going to look at the anatomy of the cardiovascular system, focused particularly on the heart. It's, you can't really understand, or no, you can understand it, but you can't put the pieces together in your brain. Um, how the cardiovascular system functions unless you have a decent understanding of heart anatomy. So it's, it's inevitable. We're just going to do it. That's what we're going to start with. We're going to look at how the heart contracts, which means we're going to be diving into cardiac muscle tissue. And in fact, since cardiac muscle is contractile, and it's striated muscle tissue, um, we're going to actually get to look at action potentials again. Um, because we're looking at action potentials, we're going to look at um, how the heart coordinates beating, and we're going to get to look a little bit at the, the cardiac cycle, which is the whole big picture of how the heart moves blood through its system and then through the body. And finally, we're going to end with heart rate and how your heart um, regulates heart rate. That is a chunk of change. So let's start out looking at the anatomy first. I have a heart here. This is in your um, notes. This exact picture is in your notes. This is a simplified vision of a cross section of a heart. Um, I would love to pull out some hearts so that we can actually look at real hearts. And it's diagrammatic, so take a deep breath. First of all, we're going to start in, well, we're going to start with the fact that a heart is basically a pump. And the heart pumps a fluid, which is blood, throughout a series of tubes, which are the vessels. It is a closed um, system. So the heart beats the blood through the vessels, and ultimately the, the blood returns to the heart and goes through the system yet again. In anatomy, you will get to explore a lot more detail in the vessels and where um, blood travels, the specific names of the vessels that blood travels through, but we're just focusing on the heart here. The heart has four chambers. We have um, the right side of the heart, of course, is on the left side of this diagram, and that is because clinically when you look at your patient who this heart is representing, the patient is lying on her back facing you. So this is actually her right side. Yes? Total agreement. That means that I have to really concentrate. Now, since this is the right side of my heart, I'm going to label my chambers first. The upper small chambers are called atria or atrium, singular, and so this is the right atrium. If you look on this diagram over here, this structure right here, that little chamber right here, this is my left atrium. And this is not um, just a blob, so we'll, we'll get to how these parts and pieces are put together. Left side, our other chamber on the left side is the left ventricle. Ventricle. So guess what this one is? The right ventricle. One of the things I don't like about this diagrammatic vision is that it doesn't show you much of a difference in the size of the walls of the right ventricle versus the left ventricle, and there's actually an enormous difference between them. The right ventricle is much thinner, and so I'm going to go like that to show you that it's, it's a thin little wall, and I'm going to um, find the thickest part of this wall and show you that, oh, the left ventricle actually has a thicker wall. In a second, you will see why. Our chambers of our heart are separated by one-way valves. So when fluid passes from the right atrium into the right ventricle, it passes through this little valvular, valvular, oh, that's such a word, 
this valve structure right here. Here's a valve, here's a valve, valve, and lo and behold, that's actually a valve as well. Um, I'm going to give you the names of these valves. These guys are easy. The valves that, mm, that's not what I wanted. Let's go with black because that's easy to see. The valves that separate the atrium and the ventricle, that valve is the AV valve, atrioventricular valve. I'm totally cool with AV valve. However, guess what this valve is called? It is also an AV valve. So how are you going to distinguish between them? We've got a right AV valve and a left AV valve. AV valves let blood go from the atrium into the ventricle. But if the blood tries to go back into the atrium, the valve snaps shut. And again, we can look at some hearts and look at those valves, and it's pretty phenomenal. Um, these valves actually are found, they, they separate the ventricle and the vessels that leave the heart, and we're going to talk about what those vessels are. These valves are semilunar valves. So that's a semilunar valve, and that's a semilunar valve. So this one, I'm going to give you some numbers here, and the reason why I'm giving you numbers is so that I can write it out completely. Number one, this is my pulmonary semilunar valve. Pulmonary semilunar valve. And pulmonary, what does that make you think of? Hopefully, that makes you think of lung. And in fact, the pulmonary semilunar valve um, separates the pulmonary arteries which go to the lungs. Look, this is my puffy lung. That's my trachea. Of course it is. Okay, so that's a pulmonary semilunar valve. What do you think that one's called? It's also a semilunar valve. It isn't separating the pulmonary artery. It's actually separating the left ventricle from the aortic arch. So it's actually called the aortic semilunar valve. We're looking at how the heart moves blood through it. How is it possible that the heart can be a pump that pumps blood through your body? I can't remember the number that I had somewhere. Your heart beats 100,000 times a day, really? I wonder how, much, how many gallons of blood every day your heart pumps. That is such a cool thought. In order to be able to visualize how the heart functions like this, we definitely have to have the structure of the heart or the anatomy. So that's why we're going through this. Anyways, aortic semilunar valve actually separates the left ventricle from the aorta. Now, aorta. It's the aortic arch. It's the, um, I'm cool with aorta. I'm cool with any part of that that you want to make it. It doesn't really matter to me. Where does blood from the aorta go? This is important. Blood in the aorta is freshly oxygenated, awesome, ready to go to the body. Blood from the aorta goes to the body, gets used up, gets used up and travels from the body back to the heart. And in order to get back to the heart, we go through this vessel right here, which is the 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 vena cava. Vena cava. We have a superior and an inferior vena cava. They both feed into the right atrium. The right atrium then feeds into the right ventricle, which goes through the pulmonary arteries to the lungs where it gets oxygenated. It comes back through the pulmonary veins. So these guys right here, those are pulmonary 
veins. The blood from the lungs comes back through the pulmonary veins into the left atrium, through the left AV valve, into the left ventricle, through the aortic semilunar valve, and into the aorta and out to the body, back into the vena cava, and it repeats the whole thing all over again. I want you to push pause. I want you to make another diagram, maybe even a diagrammatic diagram, not like, I mean, this is anatomically kind of correct, and I definitely am a fan of visualizing in a maybe not as anatomically correct way. You do it first. Draw me a picture. If you need to have boxes, like each chamber of the heart is a box, each vessel is a little tube, whatever, however you want to do it, I'm cool, do it. Draw that out and then come back and join me again because I'm going to do it right now. You didn't really leave, did you? Go away and do this before I do it. Do you want to see my diagrammatic version? This is what it's going to look like. All right, now I need my cheat sheet because I've drawn this before. And it helps me remember which way I went and how. Are you ready for this? In my diagrammatic version, oh, that's my heart. These are my chambers. These are my AV valves. Now watch and learn. What vessel comes into the right, this is my right atrium. What vessel comes into my right atrium? And look at how I'm going to do this. I'm going to have this guy coming in. It's just bringing old blood. Does it look anatomically correct? No, it does not. But the blood is old, yes? And look, where did the blood come from? It came from the body, right? The old blood that was used up, all the oxygen was taken out, all the food was taken out, from the body travels through, what was this vessel called again? The vena cava, it's a vein. It travels through the vena cava and into the right atrium. It passes through the um, right AV valve and into the left ventricle. I mean, that's not the left ventricle, is it? <laughs> that, my friends, is the right ventricle. And now it is in the right ventricle. Where does it go next? Dude, it's old, old blood, so it has to go where? It has to go to the lungs. Now look at how I did this. It's old, used up blood, and I'm going to take it out. Maybe I'll even make it go down here. Let's see what happens if I do that. Totally diagrammatic. Is this anatomically correct? No. It's going to the lungs. What happens to the blood? It exits through the pulmonary artery and goes to the lungs. Once it's in the lungs, it gets filled with oxygen. But it's in the lungs. Where does it go next? It travels into the left atrium, right? I mean, correct? Whoa, that's not going to fly. Look, dump into the left atrium. Now watch. It comes through the left atrium, nicely oxygenated. It's coming into the left ventricle. Yes. Now where does it go? Oh, I love this. Not anatomically correct, but comes out of the left ventricle. And where does it go? Through the aorta. Woo, woo, to the body. Fresh delivery of goods to the body cells. Now the body uses up those delicious oxygens and nutrients and whatever else is coming its way, and then you have crap blood. 
that it sends back to the heart. Sends back to the right atrium, through the right ventricle, through the pulmonary artery, to the lungs, where it gets oxygenated, back through the pulmonary veins, dumps into the left atrium, through the left AV valve into the left ventricle, out the left ventricle through the aorta, to the body where the blood is used up, and back into the vena cava. Are you cool? You can label that whole thing because I know you can. And now let's get up close and personal with the cells that make up the heart, I think. Yes, tissue, cardio, cardiac muscle tissue because we spent a long time with skeletal muscle tissue. Now it's time to look at what is the heart actually made out of. Let's go.